Okay, good afternoon. This is uh, Jim Hodson with uh, Lanny Parcell. We're out here at uh, Prop Wash at Cowtown Aerocrafters, and uh, this is going to be an update today on their work on our uh, OH-58 Kiowa and the bird dog. So, uh, Lanny, uh, you've got the Kiowa right behind you, so why don't we start with that? Okay, sounds good. Morning, afternoon, everybody. Um, update on the Kiowa, we started installing the glass after we got the, the interior finished, and we'll, we'll kind of walk around to that in a little bit, but... Glass has never looked as good. Now, that's new glass, right? No, it's not. Is actually. that the old glass? That, the glass on the left-hand side there is the one that was painted black that came with this wow. with this machine. We, so we found you... a trick to get it off. Oh, did you really? Yeah. And do you want to share that? Yeah. Okay. It was, it, I forget who, who hit, gave me the, the trail on it, but we actually used Easy Off Oven Cleaner. Really? Easy Off Oven Cleaner will dissolve cheap paints. So okay. that was probably rattle can paint. It's probably okay. aerosol. Yeah. It'll dissolve cheese paint, but it's neutral on plexiglass or polycarbonates. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it just uh, what did it just kind of bubble off and just or just kind uh, of we actually I, I pressure washed it off. Okay. So it would okay. soften it up, but but the pressure a water pressure washer would would cut it loose, okay. and then we buffed it with with a compound and a big uh, electric oh, a big buffer? buffer. Okay. Buffer pad. It looks great. It looks like it's brand new. It's it's not bad. The 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 one that was black has got some, you can see this little spot right here, yeah. it's not going to come up. That's heat damage where the, the defroster overheated somehow or another and it oh, cooked so the glass right along That's original. Here. Yeah, that's original damage. <laughs> that's original damage. <laughs> okay, so we'll live with that. Now, the one on this side is new though, isn't it? No, this th one that one came out of the donor, the one that, was, oh, that fell okay. over. Oh, okay, okay. Well, the glass looks terrific. I mean, it, 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 looks, it looks brand new, so... Uh, I know uh, it'll really pop when we finish painting it all up and it's it's all trimmed out. But yeah, I know it's a little dusty right now, but we've uh, been as you can see if you scan back the whole thing, we've been we've been prepping for, to paint the exterior. See if I can get back here without uh, damaging myself. Yeah. So we were prepping to paint the exterior when we, while we had the weather cuz we had a really nice December. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And 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 quite a good span of time that was pretty decent in January. So we got the back half and we'll back we'll go back there and look at it. The back okay. half has got the first coat of olive drab on it. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. And then we were ready to go and then we didn't beat the weather. The weather we, I got to have at least 65 degrees okay. with this paint and we we yeah, missed we, our window. We so we've been sitting here man. with our hands in our pockets for Well, we're we're being blessed with the Empress today. She's on she's online here oh, watching. Oh, excellent. <laughs> So you can see the glass is, is most of it's masked off. Yeah. <clears throat> and then come we can a, cut, come such a long way on this thing from where yeah. it was. As uh, you know, I don't know how many of your viewers got to see this at the museum before we started working on it, but as you'll recall, oh, almost it, nobody. It was completely gutted. It yeah. didn't have an instrument panel or controls or seats or the recovery crew saw it, but that was about it. So everything that everybody's looking at right now is essentially from the from the other helicopter, or it's new, right? That and instrument and so looks this terrific. this configuration is back to what it would have been in in the Vietnam era, because <clears throat> the 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 other one, this one and the other one, both had been modified to C models, OH right. 58 okay. Cs okay. from a OH 58 A. And so one of the things they did in the in the last stages of their career is they made them night vision goggle compatible. Okay. So the insides were all black. They blacked everything out so there wasn't any reflection. So that's why they were black. They were blacked out for okay. MBG. Okay. And so, but in Vietnam they weren't black, they were gray. So we repainted the whole insides no, of, of it with gray. And then if we can ever locate that that insulation material, the interior material. No then look we'll, with that so far. Huh? Well, Jerry's on, the, Jerry Asher is on the, He's, He's on, on the, the trail. He's on a trail. So, and here's the uh, here's the back seat. Let me step back a little bit so people can see. So it. he's found a trail. There's a place that we haven't contacted yet called Choate's Custom Interiors in Haltom City. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, and they were a subcontractor for Bell Helicopter back in the day. Were they really? And the owner, Mr. Choate's, who's in his 90s now, is still around and still actively working the business. Jerry talked to his grandson the other day. Is that right? Yeah. That's great. So we're on the trail for the 
for the okay. rest of the interior stuff, which will really complete the inside. Well, Tommy was just telling me that the fire extinguisher is period correct, the Halon mm -hmm. fire extinguisher. Yeah. It's just amazing, considering there was nothing in here. And I think that's the thing to try to emphasize with people. We'll, we'll show pictures or have pictures, but there was nothing in here. There was that main, that, main, uh, that main support beam, but that was it. Otherwise, it was blank. It was gutted, yeah. And black glass. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get back here where I can get a broad view while you talk about what's been going on back here. Yeah, so we, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's got its first coat of the Vietnam era olive drab green paint. Okay. It, obviously, it's going to take two. So, but, but it gives you an idea. So when they, when they went through upgrades uh, over the years, the Army darkened up the colors. And you, if you see any of the modern Army helicopters, they're really kind of a charcoal gray. Right. It's, they still consider it a green, but it's really dark and flat. Mm -hmm. And when they came out, when the OH-58s came out of the factory, they were kind of a semi-gloss and a, almost a World War II green. And for, okay. for us, right. for us, Restoration nuts, you know, the, this is this is federal standard 595 34087 okay. olive drab. <laughs> I know we're going to have questions about this or people are going to wonder about this, but uh, uh, we don't have the uh, the shaft covered. Why is that? Well, the shaft cover was actually a, a modification later on when they came out of the factory as an A model. They didn't have a shaft cover on them. OK. And and what it did is it exposed. I guess their their analysis at the time said it was going to be okay, but it exposed all those carrier bearings. And when they got to Vietnam, and they were in the monsoons and the dust and the crud, those carrier bearings rusted up. So what so, we're talking about is right in here, right? Yeah, that bearing. There's a bearing inside that. And so I can imagine. I can only imagine in the in the dust or the monsoons and the mud and everything else. So the uh, so the housing went on. Do you have any idea when the housing went on? I, I, I really don't know. I haven't looked that up. But I, it, I'm sure it was probably late Vietnam or right afterwards okay. when they got back and were analyzing their failure data and went, we need to cover these up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know you guys were kind of surprised. We were also surprised when uh, Ken Hen, uh, Henson yeah. told us no and then went back and found pictures and sure enough, mm -hmm. in Vietnam, they, they were not covered up. So. Uh, it's looking good now. Is yeah. this a, this just a primary coat of paint on here now, or is this going to be the final coat? That'll be the color. Okay. But, but it's going to take two coats, and the and you can see the demarcation where I stopped. Yeah. That's just the first coat. Now, did it, we've been talking about this at the museum lately with some of the stuff we're doing. So, was this sprayed or rolled? It's sprayed. It's sprayed. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of paint is this? This is. It's, uh, it's, it's effectively a Sherwin-Williams aerospace coatings. Okay. The commercial name of it is, is um, well, it left me all of a sudden, Acroglow. Acroglow, okay. Acroglow is the commercial color, or the commercial brand. The, the, there's a local place called Ben's Supply okay. in, here in Fort Worth that carries the, what they call F92, which is the mil-spec version of Acroglow. Okay. So this can, the can that this paint comes out of actually says mil-spec, Okay. Yada, 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 34087, just like you'd expect us to see in national stock. Okay. We've got Chuck Berry with us today. Chuck is uh, in charge of the OV-10s over in France, ah. one of the, uh, the flying airplanes over there. So um, nice to have you with us today, Chuck. So is there anything else you'd like to show people in the Kiowa before we go over and look at the bird dog? Oh, I, I, let's switch over to the other side and walk, okay. walk down this side. Jerry's been adding a lot of detail to the to the interior. I know okay. you got to move slow so your gyro will keep up. We got the uh, mostly so I can keep up and not hurt myself. Uh, so we've got the baggage compartment. It's kind of dark in there, but we got the baggage compartment all kind of prepped up. That's great. We use that a lot when we take the airplane on the yeah, road. Yeah. Well, this one, interestingly enough, the front half of this airplane was completely gutted, and the back half was full of all kinds of junk. Was it really? Yeah, it had radio racks and old wiring that wasn't doing anything. And so we, knowing that you were going to utilize this space a lot when this thing yeah. is on the road, That's we cleaned perfect. it all out. That's perfect. Yeah, we usually carry a sandwich board and a, and a box full of uh, giveaways and material for the museum and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so why we've had some downtime, Jerry's been adding some little detail the way it was when we started saying it. We found this yellow trim around all the doors. And that's a safety thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Perfect. 
Uh, I'm, I'm certain that some of our people have been following and they know what these things are, but let's talk about the Clico. The fastener. Clico. <laughs> it's, a, it's a temporary fastener. It's kind of like a, what would you call it? It's kind of like a brad. It takes a special pair of pliers to, to make them work. And they come in lots of different sizes based on the hole size, but you compress this. This housing right here has a spring in it. Okay. And you compress this little plunger, and the piece that's in the hole actually collapses in and gets smaller. And then okay. you can pull this thing out of the hole, and you put it back in, let go of the spring, and it spreads out and grabs a hold of it, kind of like a reusable molly bolt, if, okay. you wanna, yeah. if you're familiar with that kind sure. of thing in drywall. So it opens up on the back side and holds things together while you're getting things fitted up and lining things up. And then, and then you can get a pair, the pair of pliers. This is what it looks like. Okay. That's the pair of pliers, and it grabs it right there, and it makes this part right here collapse. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And then as you let off on it, it swells oh, up. it opens up, yeah. Yeah, there so you can put it in the hole, play like it's a screw for a little while. Okay. And then you can just pop them all out, and in two minutes I can have all that back off of there again. But in the meantime, it's holding the pieces together so you can get the alignment that you want and right. be able to start to put permanent fasteners mm -hmm. in and things like yeah. that. So. I know we've talked about them before, but uh, we've got some people haven't been with us, so yeah. that's okay. I'm going to get another interior view here from uh, from this side. Now, did most of the stuff in here come out of the other helicopter? Most of it did, yeah. Okay. Some of it we found on eBay and with other. There's actually a a group of restorers for OH58s out there. And so we traded some stuff with those guys. Another thing that's kind of, I think came out really well when you get down here is we this this particular airframe didn't have a data plate on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So we fabricated a data plate for it, which I think just came out stunning. Oh, that looks terrific. That looks like Bell Helicopter made it. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Do we have to tell Bell about that? No. Well, you just did. But. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, people who are watching have seen Carrie's comments, but I'm not going to say anything. So, she did say that her grandfather, I think it was, uh, did business with Chokes. Yeah, I don't think so. At any rate, so hmm. this is just this is just amazing. Do you? Uh, I mean, other than Tuesday, do you have yeah. some idea when this one uh, may be ready to uh, for its public debut? No, oh, I'd I I depending on the weather. Well, I mean, we've only probably got maybe a month's worth of work left to do on it, okay. short of the interior, whatever we come up with for that insulation that goes in there. But there's only about a month's worth of le work left, but it's a month's worth of work at 65 degrees or better. So that may mean something more like April. I got that. Okay, <laughs> got that. Well, okay, let's move on to the yeah, bird dog before we run out of dog. time. I'm going to stand back here where I can get a good overall view of it while you talk about it a little bit. Okay. So go ahead. Okay, so the, the last update we had, we, we, were, we had just finished up the, the tail numbers, and I believe we had the red marker on it, but I'm not sure. But Yes, but, but it was still, there was still some masking on ah, it. And, okay, uh, it's still it's, papered off. Yeah, it was, okay, it was so not completed. This is the finished product now. So this is the artwork that went on the tail for the red markers. It is just beautiful. Yes, as as the museum supplied us with a, a very good detailed drawing of what that would look like. Yeah. Plus a lot of photographs of airplanes. You couldn't really get a lot of detail from the photographs, but it yeah. was helpful for the placement. Well, that was thanks to Gary Willis. He's yeah. uh, he's our red marker connection here. So uh, it it just it's it's stunning. It is just stunning. And it's and it's all paint. There's no vinyl appliques or anything right. on there. That's all. Paint masked off, hand masked and hand and, and spray painted on. Well, I know we've been talking to people too about uh, about putting rockets on the airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to find uh, we need to find. Um, well, we've we've got some attachments. Yeah, we've got. But what we don't have are the rocket launchers or the rockets themselves. Right. You know, two point seven five inch. We found some people who can supply them, but. Uh, they're pretty proud of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to see what we can do. But we think it'd be nice if we carried a couple on, uh, on absolutely. both sides. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I just want to show people a little thing here, this little red thing. Let's talk about that for just a second. Okay. I don't think most people have ever seen seen a gust lock before or what, the, what its purpose is. Yeah, there you go. It's called a gust lock. And on the, on the bottom, it has a remove before flight tag because you okay. can't go flying with that thing still on there because controls don't move. 
and the, the, it's designed the, the, in the cockpit. There's actually a control lock. Okay. Where you can lock the stick, and all the controls will stay in a neutral position. However, in heavy weather, you usually it's a good idea, and the military did is they put gus locks on them. Right. So the because the control surface could get to wiggling around in high winds and force the lock in the cockpit to disconnect, and then okay. they would flop and around and they could damage themselves yeah. or or make the airplane want to fly more, even more. But so this is the gust lock that grabs a hold of this counterbalance horn right here and keeps this control surface it's movement great. limited. Yeah, because we're and we actually did it to get it out of our out of our knee line while we were masking all, oh, okay. all this stuff okay. on was there. There wasn't any, not much high wind in the hangar. Here. <laughs> well, there's actually there's a lot of hot air in here. Right? Yeah, <laughs> amen. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So what else would you like to show them on oh, the airplane the, here? Oh, in on the means that we've been paint limited. Let's go around the okay. outside and look at the cockpit. Working on the interior. Okay, I wanted to just get a close up of the red marker. Okay. Logo. While you're in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Walk around here and look back into the back seat. Okay. We've been tracking down some of the pieces. Some of the project, when you brought it to us, it had some of the insulation in it. Right. But it or, was pretty or with it. It was old. Yeah. So we still got all the old pieces, but we we've been hunt, hunting down. That's the one that you sent me an email on that said, "Hey, there's a guy on oh, eBay." Oh yeah, on eBay. We found some of it on eBay. Whoops. Yeah. You giving everybody vertigo? Yeah, myself included. Yeah. Okay. So we procured a couple of the pieces. As a matter of fact, we're only missing two of the original Cessna manufactured insulation pieces. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Only got two yeah. left that we're hunting for. Sometimes the camera has a mind of its own, so. I know the stuff that was in here was, was reasonably brittle. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And that kind of stuff, so, mm -hmm. uh, so it's amazing that this was essentially new old stock, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in, it, we took it out of the original Cessna wrapper. It's nice and flexible and yeah. got part, got part numbers stamped on it perfect inspector stamps right there perfect. in the corner Let's so it'll have it. all brand new panels in it and we're building a carpet i see that for yeah. the floor and what are the metal pieces that are in here well th that's where the these no, th yeah those are just dive weights just to dive hold weights. The, okay. <laughs> they're holding the carpet <laughs> well, down people are going to ask so. yeah so we did receive the fuel selector just in time for the weather to get really really cold so I've got a box with a new fuel selector in oh, it. Oh so so that's been a hang up on getting it running. Yeah. And we aren't planning to put anything terribly modern in the instrument panel on this. Well not at phase one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put it that away. Well we've come so far with this and it looks so good that uh, oops I'm not going to go backwards. Otherwise, you'll get a you'll get a real interesting video from that one from the fall. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to step back here so we get a view from this side of the airplane. So it is just really, really coming along nice. Yeah, yeah. we're 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 anxious to get the fuel selector in and get that part of the fuel system tested and finalized out and then we can put the fairings on see there's a group there's a pair of fairings that cover up this gap between the right between the wing and the fuselage we got a high from the bomber plant here too by the way okay so we haven't we haven't hooked put these fairings on yet because there's fuel lines coming from the tanks going to the fuel cell oh, yes. until we get okay. all of that tested and we know it's working yeah we don't want to put those on This has come so far. I mean, you know, we flew this in, but then it sat for a number of years. And just the work that you guys have done on it is just, uh, just really impressive, really impressive. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm, I'm anxious to get it going. Well, you should be. You guys have done, you know, you've just paid so much attention to detail on this and, and everything else. And I think this one thing I want to mention too is, and we've talked about this before, but for anybody who's been on here that isn't familiar with this, all of the lettering on this airplane was done by hand. 
I mean, yeah. You used uh, yeah, we used a paint gun to actually apply the paint, but yeah. it's all it's all taped and so this masked is, in layers there, and there are no decals here. Correct. So we can just see how how good this is. So what's the next thing to, to uh, for this air, for this airplane? Well, we keep working on the interior. Put the fuel selector in, power it back up, and see if that gets us fuel to the uh, to the engine-driven pump and to the carburetor. Okay. That's our next phase. Okay, but the engine turned over. Oh yeah, yeah. So we 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 don't have to be concerned about it having seized or any of those right. kinds of things. Yeah, problems. yeah. We've so. we've motored it. It's what we call it. We've yeah. pulled all the spark plugs out so there's no compression. Right. And then the starter can really spin it up when it's not working against the compression. Oh, so yeah, I've okay. gotten oil pressure on the oil pressure gauge from just the starter spinning oh, really? the Great. propeller. So okay, good. Those are all positive signs. Yeah. It's definitely not seized up, that's for sure. No, I'm going to step back here, get a full view, and then uh, I think we'll call it uh, call it a day here. We've, we've just about run out of our, our normal time. But uh, the work you guys have done on both of these airplanes is, is just amazing. The, We've seen your work in the past, and that's why these airplanes are here. Yeah, <laughs> but for all of anybody out there that wants to help ferret out some parts, we're looking for FM homing antennas, and that's the little black cone that goes in this fairing, this little mount right here. It's a little black cone with wires that stick out top and the bottom. Right. And then we're looking for the VHF, UHF blade antenna, which is a big, wide, flat blade. Okay. that goes right here. Matter of fact, you might have one on your O2 that you've got on display. It would have been on the roof over we'll the cockpit. Let's take a look because we've got two of those and I'm not sure. Okay. So we've got, the, we've got the loop antenna that goes right here and we've got the whip antenna that goes on the top, but okay. we're missing that one and the two FM antennas. But those are essentially going to be decorations yeah. and not, yeah. not functional. Right. So we're not looking for an airworthy part. Correct. Uh, Mike James says, looking fantastic. Thanks for the update, Lanny and Jim. And yeah. I think with that, We'll, uh, we'll call it a day so we can uh, go get warmed up and things. So, okay. <laughs> uh, Lanny, thanks from, uh, from here at, at uh, Prop Washington Cowtown Aerocrafters in Justin, Texas. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for uh, visiting today, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in another uh, week or so.